Hi everyone, in this video we're going to take a look at the repeating section for Nintex Forms for Nintex Bravo Cloud. Now, this video will also show an update to the repeating section row calculation, which is only available in Nintex Bravo Cloud today, but it will come to Office 365 in the future. So, if you're interested in repeating section row calculation, uh, continue to watch this video because I think you'll find it useful. So you'll see on the left hand side the repeating section is now available in the toolbox and let's build up a scenario which is let's say price so I'm going to do price and quantity so let's do quantity quantity so this is a simple sort of example I'm sure people have got more uh, more interesting ones than I do but this will just be a simple starting video to show off the, um, the repeating section and I'll do other videos on more complex scenarios at a later date so we've got quantity price and let's say total so simple sort of scenario if you're not familiar with repeating section it's really just like a simple mini form so when I say mini form that means that you might want to do uh, quantity times price and set the total value and so we need to have some logic just for this little mini form here not for all of them together not the collection of total or the collection of price just one singular quantity times price and it doesn't affect any others so how would we go about doing that? Well, this is an important area that people should pay attention to because what we did was when you do a rule, you may want it to apply a rule to the whole repeating section and hide the whole repeating section. Then you'd say apply to form. However, in that scenario of I only want to perform a calculation within the row on that, I guess, mini form scenario, we want to select a repeating section. So what I mean by that is, uh, let's say, uh, calculate row total so only the row not all rows so we have to apply it to the repeating section row level not the form level so I've given it a name I'm going to say if price is filled and quantity is filled now if I select the form level it doesn't actually show the controls within the repeating section because it's just looking at um, the repeating section itself so we do repeating section one. So we say price is filled and quantity is filled. Then the total uh, value, and this is where you want to insert you insert your logic. Now this is an in important area because um, how do you access just the row, not uh, not all of the all of the rows? So we had to rebuild the variable ver variable picker. So if you come to variables you'll now see that we have a, a object an object being a a um, something with more than one primitive it's 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 a container for more than one primitive so you've got repeating section one and if I click on that you can now see price quantity and total however if we think about a repeating section a user might fill this out and have 10 different rows so that means when you think about price you've got a collection of price you've got a collection of quantity and you've got a collection of total and what we're doing right now is calculating just a single row. So we want the current row. So we select current row and then we can say, now that we've got to the primitive, I can say, I want to insert price times, and I can type this out if I wanted to, and you'll see it's got quantity and quantity. And number being the current row, collection being the collection of number, of quantity, sorry. All right, so you can see that there. Now, if I was to say, go back to the repeating section and selected the collection, it's form, repeating section one to price, but that's going to be a collection. So we'll get rid of that. That's not what we need right now. So we'll go and insert, and then that's going to put our total in there. So otherwise, if that's not filled, we're going to say uh, value is blank. So it clears out the value. So we've we'll created our uh, calculation for the row, and we can go to preview. So we say two, and a price of two is four dollars and three, and a price of three is total of nine dollars. Now the next step that you're probably thinking is, well, how do I then go about getting the total of totals? So there's two different options here. You've got either populate a label or populate a control. So I'm going to put those there and I'll put a space next to them. Space here and space here and make them a bit bigger. Now in a label, I can go insert and I can put the, uh, click the insert tab here. Now if I go to form controls, um, you'll see that we have a a new way of browsing through that object, but we don't know we don't want the 
current row, we actually wanted a calculation on the, um, the, the, the array. So we want to do a form variable. So just select like form variables, go create, and I'm going to say calculate and total and we say decimal so we come back to variables repeating section one and we don't want the current row it doesn't make sense in this context because we're looking at all of the rows so we would then say uh, insert now that's going to give me um, an array so an array is going to be useful because it's not a decimal so how do we convert a collection of totals to a decimal well we use the sum function so sum will add up all of the totals together and create an insert so then we've got a calculate grand total variable so then I can say uh, your total order is got a dollar sign and go to preview and so we say price is two I'm oh, sorry quantity is two price is two total is four and now it says your total order is four dollars now how do we actually put that same value in here as well well what we just did when we created the calculate grand total we actually have this decimal already so we could really just reuse that and say well here's a new rule we're going to say um, plus to the form uh, um, set grand total and so what you want to do here is you want to check if um, has anyone actually filled out the repeating section yet now there's multiple different ways of figuring out if someone's filled out the repeating section up but I prefer to do something like um, pretty much the same as what we had before it's um, you could you could reuse that variable in here so you could use grand total uh, greater than zero that's one way of doing it so you could say then um, currency one I should rename that the value is equal to insert variable calculate grand total create insert so let's go here so we've four times four is 16 uh, three times three is nine and then you go so 25 so it's gone and so it's calculating this and this together or it's really just reusing that variable we had before it is 25 I'm just going to call this grand total now that's one way it could be done now what if we didn't have that variable what if I went in here and actually deleted that variable let's go and delete that and fix up our, our label so we don't need label anymore now we're kind of stuck well how would we oh, how would we go about um, doing this if we didn't have that label at all so I want to clear that so what you could do is a similar sort of approach you click on insert and you say sum uh, total and use the collection not the single row number do the collection and that will give you um, a number that will say well the total of uh, all the totals is X Y, whatever it might be and you're checking is it greater than zero it is okay well then I would just use the same sort of formula insert and go sum total and use the collection and what you can see here is I'm reusing this same this same um, formula now if you don't want a variable if you don't want to pass that to workflow just use formulas so uh, go and update the rule and now your rules are all okay so it's still going to do the same thing 4 times 4 is 16 uh, 3 times 3 is 9 still doing the same thing but if you wanted to pass this oh, actually grand total will get passed to the uh, workflow anyway so you didn't really need to create uh, where is it these two into a variable if you're not going to pass it to workflow just reuse it however if you see yourself updating this to apply GST or something that's a little bit more dynamic you may choose to put that in a variable to reuse it and make it a bit easier on yourself but then if we come back to here and go apply changes what you'll notice is uh, start event uh, form variables so grand title comes through as does the repeating section so it comes through with those um, those items as well so if we come back to here start event and so yes yeah, so there's a couple of different ways you can go and get that grand total now some other things you might come across are things like um, repeating section within a repeating section or doing um, calculations of what percentage of let's say um, if we add a couple of rows here someone might say what percentage is this row of the grand total now I'll save that for other videos uh, to make sure this video is nice and short but if you do have any other questions around the repeating section or how to do something or you'd like to see videos on something else certainly let me know in the comments and I'll try and get back to you cheers